now, the MSU Federal Credit Union Coaches Show. Welcome to East Lansing, where the standard is higher than ever for Michigan State's football team as it heads into year three under Mel Tucker. A brand new season is on the horizon for the Spartans, who are in the thick of preseason camp. And as you can imagine, a lot of eyes are on the running backs. Who is going to fill the void left by Kenneth Walker III? One player who is standing out has quite a connection to Tucker, as well as offensive coordinator Jay Johnson. Back in 2019, Jarek Broussard spent some time with the duo in Boulder at the University of Colorado and recently he spent some time with our Nick Mantis. He shared his journey to East Lansing and what keeps him pushing for every yard. Well, Jerry, coming here to Michigan State, I'm sure that's been an interesting transition for you, but you've obviously been a little bit more comfortable with knowing about the staff that's here. What was that like, the relationship you've had with Mel and with Jay Johnson and how they were able to get you over here? So during Coach Tuck's time at, at Colorado, I kind of got the opportunity to like, you know, find out like they were doing things and, you know, see how Mel, Mel Tucker coaches his football team. And when it came down to hit the portal, I mean, why not? Would you want to be a part of something like that? Because we all loved him at Colorado. It was just unfortunate that he ended up leaving. In Colorado's 2019 fall camp, Jerick suffered a season ending knee injury. What did that teach you, not just about going through and persevering through injuries, but what did that teach you about yourself and the way in which you were able to go through that? So that's kind of funny you use the word persevere because I have my own like little brand that I was fortunate enough to create through like the NIL and stuff. And on the side of all my hats, it has persevere on it. So, I mean, just like having that and, you know, as I like grown older, you know, I became more mature. It's like Coach Tuck, he teaches this thing called, you know, giving your feelings directly. Like you can use those those negative things that happen to you and you can make an excuse or you can use that as like, you know, your drive and your passion. So that's just kind of how I go about it. As Jarek gets ready to make his Spartan debut, comparisons to former Spartan Kenneth Walker III are easy to make. You right now are in a similar spot that Ken Walker was, being a transfer, coming into this program. Now, as you are a Doak Walker Award watch list for the second year in a row, Ken just won the Doak Walker Award. Obviously, there's a lot of eyes on you. It's not expected of you right. to have that, but what type of pressure have you put on yourself in order to just live up to your own standards? Uh, so, like, one thing about me that me and Coach Reed often talk about is, like, how hard I am on myself. And, you know, just, you know, taking it day by day and having that day by day approach. Ken Walker is a really good player, but, I mean, you know, he's gone now. And, you know, I just look at it as a me versus me approach. Like, I take it day by day. How can I get better today? What am I going to work on today? As the season progresses and as the season comes around, I just, I just look forward to contributing and helping the team win. That's all I really care about. We've heard from a couple of different coaches, a couple of different players, that you're kind of like a mouse. Have you ever seen a mouse and, and they go under a door or under, a, and like how the heck did they get through that? Sometimes I see that from Bizarre, like how did he find that and get there? So what was it like for you to hear something like that? Uh, I mean, it's always funny, but you know, it's cool. You know, like, you know, going through what I've gone through and, you know, to, to get the opportunity to showcase my talent and to have people, you know, reflect on it and, you know, tell you positive things about yourself. It's always, you know, it's always beneficial. While his style of running shows a hunger to gain yards, his appetite is loyal to his Texas roots. You've also mentioned that your favorite fast food spot, or your burger spot, What's is Waterburger. Oh, of course. As, as a Texas guy, you, you got to choose that over in and out or I mean, I don't know in if you've and tried. Out, in and out, it ain't nothing but a Krabby Patty. Like. <laughs> 
it's, it's just a cute little burger. Like We're not going to send that to anybody in the Pac-12, but all the rest of the people out there, who you probably are going to get some flack for that about. They know it's the truth. They know, <laughs> they know it's the truth. You're willing to debate the, the, sure. the echelons of Whataburger oh, I mean, over everybody else. Okay. Have you have you been able? Oh, let's go ahead. I mean, think of. I mean, you go to with a burger. You don't even got to get a burger. You can get chicken. You go to In and Out. Burger. That's, That's it. it. <laughs> so I mean, the versatility in it, you know. Right. Texas will always have his heart, but where Jarek was born is somewhere completely different. So a lot of people think I'm from Dallas, but I'm really from New Orleans and. I moved from New Orleans when I was about five years old, and that's when Hurricane Katrina hit. I grew up in Dallas, I went to school in Dallas, so I tell people that I'm from Dallas, but I mean, like, one thing that a lot of people might not know, my biggest motivation is my mother, like, seeing her go to work every day, make ends meet, you know, like, we'd ask for things, and all she would tell us is, just bring me good grades, and it's good, so, you know, just her drive and her work ethic is what motivates me the most, and I mean, I, I probably would never be able to, you know, like, Re, like repay her in a way, but as long as like she knows like her baby boy got his degree, uh, he keeps a smile on his face and she gets the opportunity to watch me ball on Saturdays, like that's perfectly fine with her and I love it. That's a special bond between you guys. Yeah. She can be able to come up a lot and see a bunch yeah, of games up here. Yeah, sure. That'll be good. This should be an exciting season for the entire Broussard family. All right, you heard Jarek mention his name, and when we come back, we're going to be sitting down with new running backs coach Ephraim Reed. He loves the versatility he has in his room going into the 2022 campaign, and you're not going to want to miss why he feels this way. As we go to break, Farm Bureau Insurance invites you to register to win an exclusive private dinner with head coach Tom Izzo. Go to InsideTheGreenSweeps.com to register. Are you thinking about switching financial institutions or opening a new account? Make the change to MSU Federal Credit Union today. MSU FCU focuses on our members and the community, offering free checking, free financial education, low loan rates, and cashback credit cards. Plus, accessing your account is easy with our mobile app, at a branch, or by visiting one of over 5,000 shared branches across the country. Make the change today. MSU FCU, building dreams together. Welcome back to the MSU Federal Credit Union Coaches Show. Even back in the spring, new running backs coach Ephraim Reed had to answer questions about Kenneth Walker III. And more than likely, it's going to be that way until the ball is kicked on September 2nd against Western Michigan. Reed was hired in January to replace William Piegler, who departed for Florida. And because of his prior experience on the staff here at Michigan State as an offensive analyst, he knows exactly what's expected of him going into his first year in this role. He also knows what to expect because he too like Jerk Broussard has a history with Jay Johnson. Obviously, this is a dream come true. Uh, you work hard and you, know, you start off at the bottom of the totem pole and you kind of hope for a good chance and, you know, one like this doesn't come, you know, quite often, but you know, I'm, I'm pretty fortunate and blessed that I've had this opportunity. Prior to coming to East Lansing in 2020, Ephraim Reed spent his entire life in the Bayou State. You know, if you've ever been to Louisiana, it's a, it's a different culture of its own, you know, with Mardi Gras and, you know, all the different festivals and holidays and just the, the way of life and the culture. For me, anytime I go anywhere else that's other than Louisiana, it's just completely different. The people are different, obviously the food's different, but, you know, coming up here to East Lansing, I think the biggest difference was obviously the weather. It's a huge difference. I'm used to 117 degree heat index, you know, during fall camping. You don't have those days anymore. So, I mean, I'm out here in long sleeves and pants every day sweating and people look at me like I'm foolish. I'm just, just what I'm used to. Born in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, Reed was a first time All-State honoree at Dutchtown High School after rushing for 32 touchdowns as a senior before going on to play at Louisiana. So not only does he know the position well, but it's where he first became familiar with Jay Johnson and his offense. This is a relationship business. You know, so for the most part, I've 
nothing's changed since I played for him as far as, you know, formationally and, you know, his thought process obviously is expanded a little, but, you know, for the most part, he still is the same guy that he was you know, over 10 years ago when I first met him. But, you know, I think that brought so much comfort because I know him, his wife, his son. I've known him for years and, you know, they're the same people you know, who recruited me when I was coming out of high school. It's a big reason why Reed has been able to pick up where William Piegler left off. However, there is one large task at hand. This has to be your favorite question and you get asked it all the time. <laughs> Let me guess. <laughs> yeah, you want to ask it? Pretty sure it has something to do with Kenneth Walker. <laughs> <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> You do have a lot of guys, though, that you're very confident in. Who is really starting to emerge in camp and sort of fill that spot? You know, the first thing I've told everyone, I've told the players, you know, when I first took the job back in January and again in the summer when you know, guys like Broussard joined us, we can't replace Kenneth Walker and what he did. There's no one in the room who could be him, so we don't need to be him. But collectively, we need to create the same value he brought to Michigan State. And that's our goal right now. We don't need anyone to go out there and try to make people miss like he did, try to make plays like he did. Collectively, if we could do that together and manage the game a certain way, we'll be just fine. Reed's room is full of versatility. And as you'll hear, each Spartan running back on the squad this year does bring something different to the table. In the spring, I thought Jalen Berger really took off. Uh, toward the end of the spring, you kind of see he was getting back in his groove after sitting, uh, sitting out last year. And same thing now, you know, he's taken off, his body's changed, he's gotten bigger, he's gotten stronger, he's gotten faster, and he's more focused and detailed. You know, Jerry Broussard came in this summer, so he was a little behind the eight ball. But I think he's done a great job of uh, catching up and, you know, understanding the playbook because obviously he played in this offense when he was at Colorado. But he's done a phenomenal job of, you know, being a, a veteran leader in the room as well. I think Harold, Harold Joyner has been practicing really hard these past couple weeks. So I think collectively the guys are buying into their roles individually. Putting the best product on the field every Saturday is what Reed is focused on, and he's not alone when it comes to this mindset. When we come back, we go one on one with national champion and Georgia transfer Amir Speed, who of course is new to East Lansing, but not Mel Tucker's coaching philosophy. See you soon. Welcome back to the MSU Federal Credit Union Coaches Show. This year's fall camp has been a bit different for Michigan State's football team than in years past due to all the construction taking place. As of late June, the second and final phase of renovations for the Tom Izzo football building project were approved. And as a result, the staff and players have been having to go back and forth from the practice facility to Spartan Stadium to use the locker rooms. To make the daily trek easier for the players, Meyer donated 30 bikes for them to use, and they even come with their own custom license plates. What's even better is once fall camp comes to an end, MSU is going to give the bikes to the Boys and Girls Club of Lansing, and one player who is taking full advantage of the free transportation is Georgia transfer Amir Speed. He and our Ian Crest took them for a ride, and he learned a lot about the sixth-year cornerback. First thing I want to know is how often are you riding these bikes around campus? <laughs> um, I think I've been at it since we got them. I've been every day. It's kind of just funner. And ha like I haven't rode a bike in a while, so being able to just ride around and just feel like a kid again, I guess, is, yeah. is fun. So going back and forth between here and the stadium has been, it's been pretty Yeah, I know it's not very far from the stadium to here, but have you had a chance to maybe take it around campus? Because it is pretty big here. Um, sometimes instead of just going straight there, I'll just I'll take like a, the big loop around just so I can get a little more, like, if I have time, just get a little more ride. And, enjoy the weather, but I haven't gone all the way around campus yet. What has it, it been like since you got here on campus in January and now as the season is less than two weeks away now? Um, it's been fun. It's been fun just me like building with the Spartan fans and my teammates and just all of how, seeing how quickly we all become and just how quick I, I believe I've gotten cool with my teammates, just everything coming together. It's just, it's just fun seeing all the pieces coming together. So I'm excited for, what, for, this, for the season, really. What is one thing that is different about what it was at Georgia compared to here for you? Um, for me, I feel like everything, like, Coach Tuck appreciates just the details of everything, like, 
I, I, it's really close. He said this is the closest you'll get to the league, and like it's really like that. Like we have details of everything we do, how we go about practice, how we work out, and it all works and it shows and pays off. You were in the transfer portal for just one week, and when you decided to come to MSU, so it seemed like it wasn't a hard decision. Was this always a place that was? When they reached out, you knew you wanted to come to after Georgia? Um, well, out of high school, like, it was between here and Georgia. I knew I could trust Coach Tuck and Coach Barnett, and they were, they were good people that my mom enjoyed, and I enjoyed, and I, I believe, like, I, I like what, what the school, and I, I just like what was going on here, so I feel like I had to join and come along. Yeah, with the experience you had last year winning a national championship, what has it been like now coming to MSU, and a lot of guys asking you about what that was like to be in that stage? Yeah, um, when I first got here, everyone was always asking just about the game and the natty, or just like, when we'll show little plays, they'll be like, oh, hey, and Coach Barnett always, he would always just joke about it. Like, when I first, he don't do it as much now, but when I first got here in meetings, he'd be like, oh, a national champion, a national champion. I'm like, oh, come on, man, come on, but. Uh, it's got to be a good feeling, though, to hear national champion next to your name, right? Yeah, it is indeed. That's why I, that's why I kind of, I have a shirt that's like, I, I, it's a great long sleeve and has just a sticker on it. I always just try to wear it so that it kind of gets get the motivation. Like, all right, this is what I want. Like, I tell people, like, I want another one. Like, why not do it again? I saw, I think it was your Twitter and Instagram handles, OG Speed. Where does OG come from for you? <laughs> OG um, really was something me and my friends started growing up little. Like, we all kind of had OG in front of our names because, like, we used to wear, we used to wear a lot of retro clothes and just kind of had a like, vintage style to us. So we just had the OG. And I kind of took it and ran with it, did my own thing. So now, like, for me, it means of greatness just because I feel like. Greatness is in me, and I feel like greatness is to come. Has that always been with you, your style, and something you can really take care of? Yeah, I get it from my mama, because she was, she was kind of styly growing up, but then just once in high school, I was always like, even at Georgia, like I never really wear too much team clothes. I just, I love wearing my clothes too much. I feel like, I, feel, I just like showing myself and my, my, my personality, and I feel like me putting on my own clothes and dressing, it's like, it's a part of me, so. I love doing it. I love fashion. Yeah, having a last name is speed. Obviously, I feel like a lot of people are like, man, that's got to be such a cool last name. Everyone's first question is always, when they hear my last name is, are you fast? Are you fast? And it's just like, <laughs> it's always just like, Are you fast? <laughs> the lady, I think I'm the fastest on the team. Really? OK. Who would, who would be close second then? Close second, I give Justin White, Jaden Reed, K, uh, KB, Kendall Brooks. He, 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 he says he can run up there with me, but we'll see one these days. Yeah. So let's test these boys out, shall we? <laughs> let's do it. All right. <laughs> I haven't ridden a bike in forever. Looking a little rusty. I know. Oh my gosh. There we go. How was this for you then, when you rode a bike for the, fir the bike for the first time? Not gonna lie, it was it was tough at first because I'm usually like I used to I used to cruise and <laughs> my dad growing up he would always he, he used to pop wheelies in front of us and brag. And I used to try and do it. I'd be like, I can't do it. Can't do it. My friends are doing too. I'm like, man, I can't get it. Did you ever envision yourself being in college for six years? <laughs> Never did, but I've always just told myself, like, you know, God's plan is different for everybody else. So the times, like, it's, it's been a couple of times probably I've been like, dang, like, I'm, I'm still doing it, but everything happens for a reason. Like, I'm here, a new family. Like, I feel like I'm best with the opportunity that I'm in now, the position I'm in now. So it's awesome. Speed is going to be relied on heavily this year to help the secondary make a massive turnaround, and he's not the only one who's hoping to make it better. Mel Tucker has been working extensively with the corners in fall camp, and we're going to show you how when the MSU Federal Credit Union Coaches Show returns. Welcome back to the MSU Federal Credit Union Coaches Show. Michigan State had the worst pass defense in the country last year, and it's not a secret to anyone who walks the halls of the football building. It's especially something head coach Mel Tucker is aware of. It's why he's taken it upon himself to also coach the cornerbacks this year, along with his other responsibilities. And it's why we mic'd Mel up so you could see for yourself how hands on he is with this position group. Is this our standard? We've done it right before. The standard's been reached before. Right? It's a small detail, but it ends up being a big play. You have to do your job. If you see something, say something. You know, a lot of times I'm just reinforcing what Scotty is saying to the defense. Um, the points of emphasis, you get what you emphasize. 
we see football the same way. And we've already watched the film together and we're presenting corrections to players or points of emphasis. And, and uh, you know, I just like to be involved and I always want to reinforce what Scotty is saying up there. Touchdowns, guys, not doing your job. Our meetings are very energetic. And um, I mean, our coaches are into it. The players know what to expect when they, when they come into the meeting room. I mean, we're, we're, we're ready to go. I mean, the coaches have already been up. The players have been up. We're a morning practice team, and so we get up, we hit the ground running. But you have to bring energy in the meetings. What time is that, Chiefs? Where's the ball thrown? I mean, we're passionate about what we do. The players are passionate. They want to be great. We want to be great. You know, we're responsible to get them as good as they can get. And so we don't have a minute to waste. When we, when we hit the meeting room, man, I mean, it's game on. All right, guys. Hey, talking press technique, get your notes out. Where's your notebook? The purpose of press technique, okay? Purpose of press technique, control the man off the line of scrimmage. So we're not gonna give these guys too much room today. You mentioned too that coaching the corners this year is a little bit humbling. <laughs> it is, it is humbling because, so, you know, this is my 26 year of coaching. You feel like, you know, hey, I got this thing figured out and I run this drill and I explain this, I watch the film with them and I tell them what to do and they'll get it done. And it doesn't work like that. Thumb up on the breastplate here, okay? We're here, okay? We lose our power. Can't do a push up like that, okay? You, can't, you don't bench press like that, it was right here. How many times, I mean, I can't tell you how many times I've said to myself, I just went over that with them or we just did that drill and it didn't get done right. And again, it's very humbling because as a coach, um, I mean, you can blame the player if you want, but that's why they call us coaches. You know, they all need a coach. And so as a coach, you're saying, hey, listen, I didn't get it done. Like, I need to explain it better. Look at your butt. See how your butt drop? So your butt, now you're square. See how you're square? He's square, you're square. But your butt drops. When your butt drops, your weight goes back on your heels. What do you like then about the position <laughs> meeting with the corners after you have the defensive meeting? Yeah, so I like um, to be able to get with the guys and really hone in on the details of their position and them individually. When they're in the defensive unit meeting, a lot of it is big picture, you know, how they fit into the, into the scheme. But, you know, Scotty's not talking to the corners about uh, their footwork or their, their hand placement in practice coverage. I like getting into the weeds and getting into the details because that's how guys get better. I jam you with this hand, okay? Grab my arm, pull me through, okay? Touchdown. I actually like to see the looks on those guys' faces when, um, when I'm describing something to them and I can see that it resonates with them and, and they take notes and say, oh, okay, I see, coach. And then I know that eventually we're going to get a chance to go in the field and practice it. On the field, um, it's, that's, that's where the rubber meets the road. To be able to take it from the classroom and take it to the field, uh, it's not the easiest thing to do in the world. And so um, we have to teach them in a logical progression. When you change direction, you change speed. Attack it, run through the ball and pluck it. I have a unique skill set. I've been blessed and fortunate to, to be able to hone that skill set, I have a gift to be able to teach. It's a great way for me to to, uh, to give back, you know, to contribute to the team, you know, to pour into the players. All right, here we go. Right there, right there. Break! Good, here we go. You know, the saying is, if you're not coaching it, you're letting it happen. So whatever you see on the field is a di direct reflection of your coaching. For me to be able to, to work with a position, it's great because I, I love being all in. I love being held accountable you know, for what happens on right, the field. Here we go. We're good. Everybody got it. It's just like the rest of the coaches. As you can see, taking care of the football is very important to Tucker, and the players are constantly reminded of it all throughout the building. It is, of course, one thing they hope to improve in 2022. We hope you've enjoyed the first episode of this brand new season of the MSU Federal Credit Union Coaches Show. We'll see you next week.